Hey, welcome back everybody. Today I want to talk about my favorite digital camera of all time. The camera that stuck with me for years, the camera that I still own and use today. And I want to talk about why it's still relevant in 2023. I'm talking about the Leica SL2S. Yes, the SL2S. I now have the reporter edition of the camera because I like its green color. I live out in the woods, kind of matches my environment. But today I want to go over several reasons why this camera is still worth it today in 2023. I know I'm going to be holding on to mine for years to come. All right, let's start with number 10. It's just so darn versatile. Now, many cameras in the mirrorless realm are super versatile. So this is nothing special to the SL2S, but I love that I can use almost any lens on it. Vintage lenses from Canon, from Nikon, uh, lenses from Voigtlander, M-mount lenses, uh, L-mount lenses, pretty much I think any lens besides Sony E-mount that you can adapt to the SL or SL2S. Um, the SL2S for me just has everything I need. The image quality, the low light performance, the versatility with lenses, the feel, the build. It's just a versatile camera. It also has very impressive video specifications and a lot of people swear by the video quality of the SL2S. Some actually compare it to Alexa cameras, cinema cameras in the output. That's pretty impressive. Number nine, the build. Now, a lot of people feel the SL series is too heavy. Uh, I, I have the opposite uh, point of view. I feel it's those big lenses uh, that add weight. Lenses like the Leica SL 51.4 is insanely heavy. Uh, the 90 to 280 is a beast. Uh, most of the Leica L mount lenses, the 24 to 90, for example, are huge and heavy. And when you put those on the camera, yeah, it's going to feel heavy. Not any heavier than like a Canon 1DX from back in the day, but pretty heavy. I like to use the SL2S with M-mount lenses. The smaller, the better. As a matter of fact, right now I'm using one from, uh, I think it's is it TT Artisans. Uh, it's the uh, replica of the Leica 28 Sumeron. So this is a 28 F56. I bought the gold copy, 280 bucks. You cannot beat this lens. For me, it's actually a little nicer than the Leica one in output because it's a little more vintagey looking. Uh, it, your, your thoughts may vary, but I love shooting these little lenses on the SL2S. And when you shoot small M lenses, the body is not too heavy at all. It feels just right. It inspires confidence. It makes you want to pick it up and use it. And the way they have that indent in for your fingers, it just feels at home in my hand. The build, you can use it as a hammer if you really needed to. You can use it for self-defense if you needed to. This is a solid camera built to last and I've had the original SL when the SL2S came out. I picked that up immediately. I never have had one issue with the SL series camera. That's pretty cool. Number eight, let's talk about the focus. Now the SL series, the SL2S I'll specifically talk about, it doesn't have the best autofocus. Uh, you don't have phase detect here on this body, but Leica has improved the SL2S dramatically in the AF department. For photos, there's never ever a misfocus or problem with the speed. For video, it's still a little slow compared to those from Sony and Canon, but it's still workable. And most people use manual focus for video anyway, right? The focus is spot on. It now has eye detect. It works fast if you're using an autofocus lens. Um, it has come a long way since it was launched. Uh, the firmware updates that Leica has put out has definitely improved the SL2S since day one. 
Number seven, the menus. One thing I dislike in a lot of modern day cameras is the extensive pages of menus and sub menus, and you gotta dig in deep. Some cameras, you have to go into the menu just to activate something. It's absolutely ridiculous. The Leica SL series, the SL2S, has beautiful menus. Um, better than any camera I've ever used. Maybe tied for me with the Hasselblad X uh, series or the 907X. Those also had beautiful menus. But the Leica menus are to the point. They're easy to understand. You don't have to dig deep into them to turn things on when you're shooting. It's a set it and forget it kind of camera. I also like that it has two modes, one for photo and one for video. You press a button, your video settings come up and your video uh, screen comes up. So you can have settings for your photo and video. You don't have to keep changing them. So I love the way the camera works. I love the way it operates. It's simple, um, it's a piece of cake to use and everything is done beautifully. Number six, the image quality. The files from the SL2S uh, being that it's a 24 megapixel sensor, which happens to be my favorite megapixel count um, because I like fatter pixels versus those tiny pixels squished onto the sensor. That's when we get problems with noise and other, other things pop up that I don't like. But the SL2S has 24 megapixels. That's enough to print as large as I'll ever need. I have prints 20 by 30 that look astonishing from the SL2S, right? Uh, there's kind of it's kind of a myth that you have to have these massive megapixels to enjoy photography. A lot of people think they need that 100 megapixels so they can zoom in on every little detail. But guess what? When someone's looking at a print of yours, they're not going up there with a magnifying glass trying to see how many details you captured. They're looking at the work as a whole. And a 24 megapixel sensor for me provides just the right amount of everything. Great dynamic range beautiful low light performance, uh, nice color, and the SL2S has a beautiful kind of natural color. It's a little different from the original SL, but it's still beautiful, rich, gentle. Um, just an overall lovely, lovely image coming from the sensor inside. That leads me to the fifth reason, number five. Um, low light capability of the SL2S is absolutely fantastic um, for me at best the original a7s uh, it might even best the a7s 3 or equal it i should say i have shots at 50,000 iso that are absolutely unbelievably good right like i could print them if i really wanted to um, I, I wouldn't normally shoot at iso 50,000, but if you're shooting at normal isos for low light 6400 even 12,500 you can get some beautiful, beautiful images that have very little noise in them. The SL2S for me is one heck of a low light camera as well as a bright light camera, but I like that versatility that I talked about earlier. Being able to shoot in bright light and have that dynamic range, having the ability to shoot in low light and getting as little noise as possible. Number four, the dynamic range. The dynamic range of the SL2S is unbelievably good. It's actually more than I would ever need. Uh, I've shot cameras from Sony, from Canon, from Panasonic, from Fuji. Uh, Fuji's really good as well. Um, but the dynamic range that I'm getting on the SL2S is besting my previous cameras from Sony and from Canon. Um, there's just something about the way that you can play with those shadows and highlights. You can save an image if you've overblown it which is almost impossible to do on this camera because the metering is so good um, but yeah the dynamic range is stunning the three the sl2s and the sl2 are the best feeling cameras i've ever owned or touched right i've never had a camera in my hand that feels as good in my hand as the sl2s and the sl2 they are designed in a way that at least it's almost like they were designed for my specific hand. This might not be true for everybody, but it feels so much better to me than any other brand of camera that I've held. It feels way better to me than even Leica's M, right? The M11. 
the M10. Um, the SL just has a feel. And again, with that new indented uh, part of the grip, your fingers just slide in and you hold it very securely. And it just feels like an extension of your hand. And that's an important thing when you're taking photos. You want that camera to feel like an extension of your hand so it's comfortable and natural to use. Number two. One thing I like about this series of camera is Leica's not releasing a new SL every year or two. Rather, they're upgrading it and uh, improving it via firmware updates. The camera that the SL2S was when it came out is different from the SL2S of today, and it's better today. Better in almost, not every way, but better in focus. There's, there's no glitches. It's just, it just works, and that is due to Leica's commitment to upgrading it via firmware and most camera companies upgrade via firmware they all do it right but leica has really kept on top of it and they've made the sl2s just such a stunning camera and they've upgraded it with those firmware updates so let's go to the number one reason so number one is a personal opinion of mine i know a lot of you are not going to agree some of you might even throw a tomato at the tv but for me this is Leica's best camera that they've ever made in the digital realm. I'm not talking about their classic film cameras, but for digital, for me, and I've tried them all, every one of them, the SL2S for me is Leica's best camera. It's also Leica's best camera, in my opinion, for shooting M mount lenses. Some will say, well, what about the M11? If you've seen my M11 video, you know my feelings on that. With the SL2S and any M lens, the Noctilux F95, you can get pinpoint focusing and finally see that the Noctilux is sharp, wide open at your focus point. I often read a lot of people saying the Noctilux 95 is not sharp anywhere in the frame. That's because using it on an M, you're never going to be perfectly in focus. There's always some variance with that rangefinder patch. So, if you're shooting it on something like the SL2S, SL2, SL, and that big massive porthole viewfinder, you can really get pinpoint focus and unlock the magic of some of these fast lenses from Leica. I don't know how many times I've shot these beautiful lenses that cost three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars on an M camera, and, and I say to myself, well, this looks kind of a little blurry it doesn't look right that's because it was misfocusing when you get the light right and the focus right these lenses really show their stuff and they do that with ease on the Leica SL series the SL2S for me is absolutely Leica's best digital camera that they've ever made um, it's why I still own one it's why I sold my black SL2S and bought the reporter edition not so long ago because I just love the color and I know that's my camera. That's the camera for me. So is the SL2S a good buy in 2023? Heck yeah, it is. If you plan to use it for photography, a little bit of video, if you plan on wanting a camera that's gonna last you instead of wanting to upgrade, you know, every year, every six months, some people upgrade, it's nuts. This is the first camera that stopped the upgrade train for me. And I've tried a lot of the newer cameras. None of them, for me, got close to the SL2S. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.